In the previous lecture on the Calabi-Yau manifolds, we saw that we can take the complexified tangent bundle that was written as TCM and split it into two eigenspaces of J uh, with eigenvalues uh, plus minus iota. Right. So what I'm saying is explicitly uh, for um, for x that belongs to uh, this complexified uh, tangent bundle, uh, we can write down t uh, one zero of m is equal to x minus iota j x. And for t uh, zero one m, we can write down uh, x plus iota j x, right? So here with this we have uh, two eigenvalues minus iota and plus iota. Now, uh, well, moreover, you may also easily see that if you have this thing uh, t. 1 comma 0 m is equal to 1 by 2 1 minus iota j x then well let's call this thing uh, something let's call it p minus right and let's see what this thing is right so if I take this uh, p minus squared what is that it, I would have 1 by 4 and I'll have 1 minus iota j minus iota j plus 1. Now what is this? With this I get back, uh, well let's just solve this right. So 1 by 4 and 1 plus 1 is 2 and minus iota j is like is minus 2 iota j. So I can take 2 outside factor 2 and I would get 1 by 2 1 minus uh, iota j and this thing is exactly my p minus which is this thing so what does this mean this just means that p minus is a projection operator so it's a projection operator now also recall from previous lecture that we have a j a b and JBC is equal to negative delta AC. So for uh, a complex C1 space, we must have A is equal to B is equal to C. So then this thing then becomes, uh, well, J times J would become J squared is equal to uh, with a and c are equal I would get 1 over there and then with this negative sign I would have negative 1 so I have this and so in c1 I get my usual definition back that this thing just is or uh, iota squared is equal to minus 1 in c1 right and so previously I defined uh, this as uh, the higher dimensional definition of uh, iota square is equal to minus 1. So with this then in the end we have uh, t of m is equal to t1 comma 0 m uh, direct sum t0 1 m right and the uh, dual version of this or you could say the cotangent version of this thing would be t star of m t 1 comma 0 uh, well let's put a star over here of m direct sum t t star 1 comma 0 actually this time we would have 0 comma 1 of m right okay now uh, well remember that uh, in the previous lecture I said that J is an almost complex structure.
but this almost complex structure is promoted to a complex structure when uh, I have this uh, T 1 comma 0 M and T 0 comma 1 M well what is this this is just the Lie bracket right and uh, this Lie bracket is less than equal to T 1 0 M right so that is just saying that the Lie bracket of the holomorphic vectors which actually measures the rate of change of one vector field along the flow that is induced by the other vector field. So this thing has to remain holomorphic, right? So uh, let's define some uh, vectors V as V A partial A and W as W B partial B. With this then I can write down a commutator of V and W or the Lie bracket of V and W as V A partial A W B partial B minus W A partial A uh, V B partial um, B right okay so now for uh, W we have or for W I can write this down as x minus iota jx uh, uh, comma y minus iota jy right or let's write y like this right so this Lie bracket and well what is this Lie bracket well I can use the properties of commutators and I can write this down as x comma y minus jx jy minus iota x comma jy plus jx comma y right okay so let's close this bracket now uh, we have that well for, if from this uh, this definition uh, which we said for uh, for j uh, to be a completely complex structure right we have to satisfy this relation so to satisfy this relation well uh, we have that then this W should uh, be less than equal to T 1 comma 0 M right and this is if um, J W is equal to iota W or what now I can write down is JW I can write it down as um, J on uh, this thing right because that's how I define my W so well that would be J on X comma Y Lie bracket minus J on the Lie bracket of JX and JY minus iota well uh, minus iota brackets j on the commutator of x and jy plus j on the Lie bracket of jx and y right okay so what do we want this whole thing to be equal to well we want it to be equal to iota w so first let me write down iota w as again using this uh, uh, expression I'll have iota the Lie bracket of x y minus iota Lie bracket of j x j y uh, and well I have already I have iota here so this would just become iota times iota minus 1 and minus 1 times this minus would make it uh, plus so I would have plus the Lie bracket of x j y plus j x uh, and y right okay perfect now uh, what we have to do is we'll simply equate the real and the imaginary parts of both sides of the equation right of uh, this equation so let's do that uh, the real part 
let's write down the real part first. So the real part would simply be j x comma y uh, minus j on the Lie bracket of j x j y, which is equal to the uh, uh, real part of the other side is x j y uh, plus j x y. Right? Okay. Now uh, this is the real part. Now for the imaginary part, uh, we would have j on the Lie bracket of x j y plus j on the Lie bracket of j x y. Mm, and this thing would be equal to the other side imaginary part, which is negative Lie bracket of x and y plus the Lie bracket of uh, jx and jy. Right. Now, uh, imaginary is just equal to j times the real part, right? And so if real part is true, then so is imaginary part, right? So therefore, when uh, this thing, when I have this jx, y Lie bracket minus j uh, Lie bracket of jx jy minus the Lie bracket of x and jy minus jx y Lie bracket is equal to zero. This is for all x y which is a subset of t one comma zero m and if this thing is true, I mean this one, uh, then the manifold is complex. Manifold is complex, right? So the structure is now completely complex because again, we started off by saying that it has to uh, satisfy this relation. And so we define some U and V uh, sorry, V and W, and we worked it out and we saw that indeed it is true for this thing. And uh, so that means that the manifold is entirely complex, right? So the structure is entirely complex. Okay, so from this now that we know what a complex manifold is, we will look at some of the examples of this complex manifold, right? So, uh, well, First of all, let's get this one out of the way that obviously Cn is a complex manifold and uh, uh, that is because as it can be fully covered by just one chart, it does not need any transition functions, right? Okay, so moving on to uh, a less trivial example, uh, we'll first consider a real projective space. Uh, what is a real projective space? Well, it's uh, written as R uh, P N. Now, this can be realized as a set of lines passing through uh, an origin in uh, in R N plus one. So let me just quickly draw what I'm saying is let's draw two axes X and Y. So let's have y here, x here. And if you have these lines that are passing through uh, these two axes, so you could have a lot of lines, something like, mm, something like this, right? Okay. So yeah, something like this. And for this now, uh, this thing is in R2, right? And if it is in R2, well, each line is a point in uh, Rp, right? Well, in R P one and hence that means that Rp is one dimension, right? Because uh, each line is a point in this uh, Rp space. Now, uh, another useful definition is of, uh, well, when you have R P uh, N is equal to S N 
and uh, uh, well uh, s n is your n sphere with some uh, with uh, antipodal points identified right so antipodal points are just which uh, the points that are uh, equal distant to from uh, the diameter well uh, let me draw this and show you so you have these two axes let's draw a circle yes and you have these two axes now let's say you have three points on this part of the circle and let's label them one two three the antipodal points would be uh, for this thing the opposite to this is this one so that's one the opposite to this one is this one so that's two and the opposite to this one is this point over here so that's three right well okay now let's move on a bit further and finally let's talk about the most useful one for us then that is we can start with uh, we can start with something that is well r n plus one and a set of zero right now this uh, this thing is just where you have your x is equal to y is equal to z which is equal to zero and it is quotiented by uh, x comma y comma z which is simply equal to some lambda times x comma y comma z well we could have more in higher dimensions so let's just add these three dots right and this thing now here lambda is simply a non-zero real number because again remember that we said that uh, uh, well I said that let's start with a simple case of uh, well uh, a real projective space right so so far we are talking about real projective space which you can clearly see from this thing right okay so uh, well this actually is just the formal version of the first definition above that we talked about over here right okay so well note that we have to remove this uh, zero set um, in order to get a well-defined quotient right and also note that your uh, this x y and z they are uh, homogeneous coordinates right okay so now we can move further now what we will do is we will simply show uh, that this thing is uh, a manifold right a real manifold of course so consider that you have r p um, r p 2 right and r p 2 is defined it is defined in r 3 with uh, this z zero set right now what we will do is to show that this is indeed a manifold we are going to consider open sets so uh, let's consider three open sets of course for x y and z so uh, for x you would have uh, well it, because if it's for x so x would be non-zero then you would have y and z you would have for uh, y and for this you would have um, x uh, y would be non-zero and z and you will have um, you will have u z which would be equal to x y and z is non-zero right okay now uh, we have that this thing r p uh, 2 is equal to a well it is just the product of this ux uy and uz so on each of these we can define in homogeneous coordinates and uh, that is ux we can write that down in in homogeneous one because uh, we have x so x over x is one then we would have y over x and z over x right and let's just call this thing some uh, eta uh, i x right and uh, let's write down for y u y would be uh, well you would have x over y 
y over y is just 1 and z over y and let's call this eta i y and finally uz would be simply x over z y over z and z over z is simply 1 so this thing is equivalent to uh, eta i z perfect now on the uh, well on an intersection and let's consider an intersection of uh, uh, let's take ux intersection uy for an example we know that x is not equal to zero and y is not equal to zero so this and is very important and if so then we can convert from one coordinate system to another with simply this thing that I can write down as well some uh, psi uh, x y i which is just eta i x y oh uh, sorry not x y eta i y um, u x intersection u y and it takes you well it's a map and it takes uh, this map it takes this thing to uh, uh, eta i x u x intersection u y so you can see you can go from one coordinate system to another one of course keeping in mind that x and y both have to be non-zero at the same time right now here again this uh, psi uh, i x y is simply the multiplication with y over x right okay so well uh, uh, what i just mean is that y over x multiplied by say x over y uh, 1 and z over y for uh, this thing right uh, eta i y this is simply equal to 1 y over x uh, z over x so you can see you went from this coordinate space to this coordinate space and now you can clearly see that this, uh, this space is uh, differentiable. And if it is differentiable, then we can say that it is indeed a manifold, right? Because that's the definition of a manifold. And so we started with uh, working on RP2. So we can say RP2 is indeed a manifold. Perfect. Now, the next step would be to simply generalize this definition to the complex space, right? So far, we are working in real space. Let's go ahead and do uh, generalize this to some complex uh, projective space, CPN. And we will start with the same thing. We'll start with C uh, n plus 1 uh, 0 and we will quotient it with uh, z1 z2 up to uh, z well uh, up to z n plus 1 uh, which is equal to lambda z1 uh, up to z n plus 1 right and this time this lambda over here it has to be a uh, non zero complex number right because we are working in uh, the complex space now right so let's quickly go and prove that this is indeed a complex manifold so again we shall proceed in the similar manner for uh, how we did in the real case in the real projective space so we will again consider open charts uh, which would be u uh, alpha is equal to z alpha and this would be non-zero right so we are generally writing the same thing as we did above and over here where uh, this cp n is simply the union from alpha is equal to 1 to n plus 1 of u uh, alpha right okay 
Now we will again define inhomogeneous coordinates on each of these as uh, eta, uh, eta alpha mu is equal to z mu over z alpha, right, in complex space. Then on uh, an uh, any in, uh, well on an intersection, what you would have is uh, eta alpha mu is equal to z mu over z alpha, which would be equal to z mu over z beta times z beta over uh, z alpha. And this thing is simply equal to eta beta mu times z beta over z alpha. So why did I do this? Well, this was done to simply figure out the transition functions and the transition functions we can clearly see from this case are these. So uh, the transition, uh, transition, I don't know how to spell it, transition functions for this case are z beta over z alpha. Perfect. Now these transition functions are clearly holomorphic. And if so, hence we can say uh, C P N is a complex manifold. A complex manifold. And well, so it also happens that it is a compact uh, manifold, right? A compact complex manifold. Now, other examples of uh, complex manifolds include, well, uh, sub manifolds of the complex manifolds. Say in particular, um, starting with the compact examples of this uh, CPN, we can generate sub manifolds as the zero locus of the finite number of the polynomial equations, right? And uh, in, uh, say, in CP4, right, for n equals 4, we can use Z1S plus Z2S plus Z3S plus Z4S plus Z5S is equal to 0. And we can use this thing to generate what is known as the Fermat's quintic. And as it will turn out uh, that this would be uh, one of the example of the Calabi-Yau uh, Calabi threefold, right? And so we are we will look at this in the next videos in this series. Uh, and so hopefully in one or two more videos we would be completely finishing the uh, Calabi-Yau and completely developing the Calabi-Yau space.